Okay, good afternoon everybody. This is the examination preparation workshop and um, thank you all for coming along. Uh, we've got uh, five or six of you at the moment. I'm sure there'll be quite a few more in the short term because we had a lot of students asking for this session. So uh, hopefully they come along. I won't be able to go through each uh, individual exam uh, in the session, this one AI session. What I'd ask you to do, I've uh, for those of you that were here prior to uh, two o'clock, I was talking to Medina about her particular exam. I was talking to Sonam about her particular exam. If you contact me outside of this session, then we can look at your particular exams. Uh, this is more about uh, general questions uh, for examination preparation. Uh, and just to alleviate any fears you might have uh, around your exams. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully you can all see the JCU website. Uh, if I was setting myself up at home for an exam, I'd make sure that I had uh, enough water to get me through the exam. Um, I'd make sure that I've got a chocolate or two beside me uh, for energy. I'd ensure that I have a lot of note paper and pens for things I just want to work through in my mind before I start uh, tapping on the keys. Uh, I do know so there's, there's nine different types of exams, uh, so it's going to be difficult for me to cover all of those. Uh, but many of the exams will allow you to upload uh, your uh, documents. You might be able to take a photograph in some exams of what you've done in a written way. Um, and and upload those um, or put them into the document that you're going to upload. That might be useful. Uh, if you want to draw a diagram, etc., cetera, uh, it might be useful to uh, add that into the document uh, that you're doing. So um, having a lot of paper and, and pencils and pens beside you will be very, very useful, I'm sure even if you're, you're just doing a online exam. Um, I like to work through, through things through my hands uh, and my mind, uh, and then I'm probably going to have a better result. Um, you do need to be mindful of time uh, on some of these exams, so we'll have time limits. Uh, and so how do we access the exam? That's probably the first thing. So. We need to go to Learn JCU. All exams are on Learn JCU. So you click on Learn JCU. Now, if like me, you're using your regular device, it should take you straight into uh, Learn JCU like it did there for me. Um, if not, obviously you use your uh, usual JC code, uh, your user code and your usual password. Now, this is where some students have issues. They've forgotten their password because many times you're doing it on your phone. And obviously you don't want to be doing your exam on the phone. I don't think that would be a very good idea. Okay, um, can't stop you doing it on your phone, but I don't think that would be a very good idea. Uh, so you will need to remind yourself of your password. Uh, if you haven't used it for a long time, uh, it may well need to be reset. You don't want to be doing that on the day you're doing your exam. So make sure you can log on uh, on your favorite machine. If you're thinking of coming in on campus to do your exams, you're most welcome. Uh, make sure you get here nice and early um, and make sure you come here a day or two before your exam, set yourself up on a computer and just make sure that you can access your Learn JCU and learn and the subjects uh, that you need to do the exams in. I think that's very important. Preparation is always very, very uh, useful uh, in terms of something new, which this is. This is new for all of us. Uh, just don't, but always be mindful of that. You're not the only one that's going through this process on your own for the first time. 
Uh, everybody's having the same issues and we're all here. Uh, we're all very supportive and we want you to be successful. So uh, don't get too concerned, but you will do need, do need to do some preparation. Uh, you need to go and do practice tests if you've been given them. Uh, have a look at the information you've been provided around your exams from your lecturers, etc. Okay, so I'm going to assume we can get into Learn JCU. And when we do get into Learn JCU, obviously we want to click on subjects. Now, unless you're uh, doing four subjects or less than three subjects, you'll probably have three subjects in the 2020 SP21 zone. Uh, I'm, I obviously have access to many more subjects than that. Uh, all the subjects that have exams I've got access to uh, so that I can assist you. Okay, so let's say you were a BU1002 student. You would click on the subject link, which takes you into the subject page and that, it, that will happen. Okay, there's no timing on that. Okay, so that will happen. And when you go in here, you'll find all the usual folders that you've been used to through the trimester. The folder we're interested in for our exams is assessments. And when we click on assessment, we will find one of them will be headed final examination. Now, if you can't find the folder, and it is the time for your exam, then please ensure you ring uh, the numbers that you were provided by George earlier. So let me just find that email. Okay, so if you don't know uh, what the email is, you can always just type the name of the person who sent it to you. Okay, and there's the email there. Uh, the email was headed exam information. Now I believe you've all been given this information here. These are the phone numbers uh, that you should ring if you've got any issues at all with your exams. Do not hesitate. As soon as you have a problem, ring. It doesn't matter if you haven't really got a problem. We don't mind, okay? We're there to help. Uh, you do need to be mindful though, that those phones will only be manned between nine o'clock and 5 p.m. in the evening. So if you've got a 24 hour uh, window to do your exam or a 48 hour window to do your exam, uh, we won't be answering the phones at 2 a.m. in the morning, okay? Uh, so, if you do have issues at that time of the morning, uh, I think your best bet is to send an email to this uh, inbox. Okay, not don't phone, just send it to this inbox and we will look at that as soon as uh, we appear at work. Um, so I get here normally about 7.30 in the morning. Uh, certainly in the exam period, I'll be trying to do that. And I often don't leave till six o'clock. Um, so I, I may well be able to answer your questions a little bit earlier than nine o'clock using the email and a little bit later than five o'clock. But still, it's going to be within that 7.30 to 6 p.m. period that you, you're not going to get any responses. So um, there's nothing much we can do about that, unfortunately. I have been advised to ensure that I don't answer things outside that time, because if I'd start doing that, I've got to be doing that for all students. So I think that's fair advice. Is there any questions on that at the moment? I'll just unshare for the second. Any questions? Okay, so just very quickly, make sure if you're not going, if you if you're usually using your phone to access Learn JCU, uh, that and you're going to use a computer. Make sure that you uh, sit down a couple of days before exams 
and make sure you can log on to learn JCU. That'll be an issue. Uh, yes, I would use Chrome. It's a very good question. Firefox will also work well. Um, anything to do with Microsoft, you should avoid or Explorer uh, because the, um, the universities, websites, etc., have all been developed using Chrome and Firefox. Okay, it's a very good question, thank you. I've just got you down as Android there. I don't know what your name is, but thank you for that. So yeah, if you're always using your phone, you need to be a little bit prepared beforehand. Make sure you set up nicely everything you'll need uh, before your exam and um, lock the cat out of the room so it doesn't jump on your keys and wreck your exam, etc. You'll need to make sure everybody's aware that you're sitting an exam, whatever context you're in. Uh, yes, uh, as I said previously, um, you're most welcome to come on campus, but I would suggest that obviously we only have a limited number of machines on campus. If you do determine you're going to come on campus to do your exams, make sure you get here nice and early and make sure you've come in prior uh, and make sure that you, um, you can log on to the machines. We, we do forget our passwords. I'm forgetting passwords all the time. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be looking for a password when you're trying to do an exam. It does take, it can take some time to get your password reset. You may miss your exam, okay? Uh, we don't want that. Uh -huh. Brett, could you please a little bit clarify like uh, 45 hours exam and within 45 hours, four hours, for example, if I come to exam room at eight o'clock, do I have to finish at 12? Or like if I come and get the questions and shut down the exam and prepare the questions and can I come back, for example, late at 12 or within when you come first and in this time, uh, does the time count from when, when you start? Like if you shut down and is it stop or not? Um, I'm, hesitant, I'm, I'm hesitant to answer this question because I, I'm a little bit confused by the question itself. So just bear with me. Uh, so I'm going to relay the question back to you. So what you're saying to me is you've got a four hour exam. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. If you've got a four hour exam, as soon as you open the exam, the exam will have the questions that you have to answer on the paper. Yeah. Or, or you'll have an exam that you're going to prepare outside of the exam and post up to and post up to uh, Dropbox. Up to the Dropbox, right? Right. So if you've got a Dropbox exam, as long as you put your, my understanding is, as, as long as you drop the exam into the Dropbox within the period that the exam is running, then then you will have submitted your exam on time. Okay, I get it. Thank you very much. It's okay. clear now. Yeah, but, I understand but, it. But so can I make this point? You should clarify this with your lecturer. Don't, okay. re don't rely on old muggins me. Okay? Yep. There are somewhere in the vicinity of 200 different exams. Yeah. We've been shown there's nine different types of exams and you need to be sure what type of exam it is that you're doing. Okay, so, I get it. So yeah. working, working with your lecturer is a must, being prepared is a must. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Have I answered your question properly? Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Medina. Uh, yes, this is being recorded for all those that uh, came a little late. You, you're most welcome to drop in and out of my webinars, obviously, and they'll always be recorded, so you can have a look at it later. Uh, I, I need to... 
I need to just make the point that this is a general. Uh, yes, Godwin, did you want to say something? No? Okay, sorry. Okay, so, um, yeah, thanks Thanks for answering that, Jack. Yeah. Well, this is what we're worried about. That's a very good question. Can we, can we sit exams with friends? The answer is no. Um, examination is meant to be an individual endeavour. Uh, be very careful. There will be questions, I'm sure, that uh, your lecturers will ask uh, by way of trying to ensure that it's your individual effort. Uh, my view is that if I was going to sit exams uh, in, this, in this period coming forward, I would be sitting all on my own and doing my work myself because my experience has been uh, friends uh, often wanting to be helpful, but in fact, they're very unhelpful. What can ha occur, particularly in an ang anxious uh, area like uh, exams, is that the, the anxious energy is transferred to each other and we all become anxious. Um, I find I'm rather calm in exams until I walk into the exam. The anxious energy tends to affect me for a little bit and then after a while uh, I start to cool into the, what I call cool into the exam. So uh, personally, I would want to do it by myself, A, and B, you're, you are uh, to do them by yourself. Uh, that's uh, what's meant to happen. How do you become less anxious? Well, A, you have to be very prepared. Um, so you need to know exactly what you believe is to be uh, assessed. Uh, the best person to find that out from, obviously, is your, what I like to call assessor or your lecturer. You might call them lecturers, tutors. Uh, they will have a very good idea of what's on the exam, obviously. Um, they're not going to mislead you. They may uh, not give you direct information about what will be on the exam, obviously, uh, but they'll, they will ensure that you're focused in the right areas. Um, so this is what you must do. You must talk to your lecturers. Um, not, now, I, I'd be very careful with what I say here because you don't go up to a lecturer and say, hey, what's on the exam? Uh, they're certainly not going to answer that question. Uh, what you need to do is, is to look at the information you've been given uh, on the website and what you've focused on in your, your uh, classes. Uh, be mindful of those areas and then look at those areas and ask yourself, now, which areas am I weak in. Of course, if you're weak in all areas and you've got a major problem and you're going to have to do what we call swatting, and that's what this week's about. That's why it's called the swap back week, okay, the swap vacation. Um, so you're going to have to do a lot of swatting, uh, trying to uh, get your mind around the things that you, you've left to the, to the end of the trimester to try and understand. That's fine. Uh, you've, got, you've got plenty of time at the moment. Um, to get stuff into your mind. Um, anxiety is caused by multiple things. First, not knowing and not being prepared, not eating properly, not sleeping properly, um, and obviously working yourself up because so you've got to try and, if you, if you feel yourself getting anxious, and we all know when we're getting anxious, you have to, you have to sort of, you know, relax yourself, breathe properly, uh, you know, make yourself feel better. Um, we have the wellness team here on campus. Um, they have a flyer which I can give you um, if you come to my office. Okay, oh, that's, <laughs> that's back to front, isn't it? Oh, well, <laughs> very useless. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
they've got a flyer there. I can provide that to you if you want, want it. Uh, just uh, provide me with a, oh, actually, let me type it in the chat room now. Uh, look, my, but my, my best advice is this, is to know your subject back to front. Um, that takes a lot of preparation. Uh, you can do it now, but it's going to take a lot of work over the next few days. Uh, second, make sure you're very prepared on the day. Uh, have everything you like around you. If you like chocolates like me, have some chocolates there. Uh, if you like uh, nibbling on uh, your sandwiches or something like that, make sure you've got a couple of sandwiches with you. Make sure you've got your water bottle full uh, with you. Um, some people like caffeine. If you're a smoker, I, I guess an online exam would be the best thing in the world for a smoker. You'll be able to smoke away. <laughs> yeah, it's um, if you're not a smoker, please don't start. Um, yeah. So good question. Uh, reading questions, extra time for reading questions. That's a very good. That's a very good question. Again, you're going to have to talk to each lecturer on that. My understanding is that all the lecturers have reduced the size of their exams to ensure that it can be accommodated uh, within the time um, that's been provided. Um, there's no set reading time. Um, what we call perusal time in a, um, in a oh, I'm gonna call normal exam. Um, and a sit down exam. Um, so uh, yeah, that will be up to you. You have to uh, work out how you're going to manage your time in the exam. Uh, my view uh, is that I would always read through uh, the exam or scan through it anyway uh, to find those questions that I'm most comfortable with first. I find that if I answer the questions I'm more comfortable with first, my confidence starts to build, that anxiety that might have been in with me starts to drop. Uh, I like to talk about the knowledge string that we have in our head. So as I'm pulling at the knowledge string, uh, what I'm doing is I'm pulling other knowledge out of my head. So over time, what we see is uh, uh, during the exam is I'm starting to remember more and more uh, about the, the subject if I do those things that I know I know first, and it starts to remind me and get, get the mind uh, focused, um, and you get into a zone, uh, you really do. I think that's going to be the major concern uh, when you're sitting at home, is you get into a zone. Now, I know it's sometimes when I'm doing things at home, I get into a zone and all of a sudden I go, oh, where's all the time gone? So, uh, I think you'd be very, uh, it'd be very useful to have a clock uh, or a watch on the desk and make sure you only spend X amount of time on each question. So if we had 10 questions in an exam and we had two hours and all those questions were worth the same, then obviously we want to spend 12 minutes on each of those questions. Uh, it's not as simple as that for all, uh, all exams, obviously, some questions are going to be worth more than others, and you're going to have to work out how many minutes that is. That can be difficult at times. Try and work out what one, mo one mark's worth in terms of minutes and spend that amount of time on it, if it's a timed exam. Uh, if a lot of your exams won't be timed exams, they're in fact uh, uh, like assignments, but over a couple of days. Okay, so um, I'm just going to I'm just going to skip the question about the grading system at the minute. Not that I'm not going to answer it in the jot, but I will answer it very shortly. Uh, just going to share my screen again. Okay, so these are the numbers. Uh, you'll have to write that down. Oops, oh, there we are. Um, so there's a picture. 7885, they're all 3001. Uh, then there's 3308 226. So they're the numbers stopping sharing again. So that question, what will happen if the network goes down? You must contact those numbers immediately. 
no, de no delay. So you can't be working on your phone, you need your phone so that if you have a problem, you get straight on the phone and you ring. It might be me that answers or George. George is our uh, academic administration manager or, or Ashley, who's our senior associate dean. The three of us are working together and uh, we've got your best interests at heart. Obviously we can't answer questions for you on the exam, but we can attempt to assist you on anything around that. Okay, does that answer your question? All right, so I've got Android asking, what happens if I fail an exam? Is there a supplementary? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Uh, if you sit the exam and you score something very similar to 50, but not quite, then a supplementary may, may, M-A-Y, be uh, provided to you. There's no guarantees, okay, that's uh, determined by the examinations committee, which is made up of a couple of people from this campus, uh, but the majority of people from other campuses, uh, so that uh, people on a, on a particular campus, who obviously will have a bias for their particular students, uh, don't get a, any real say in that. So uh, I wouldn't be relying on a supplementary exam personally. I would be trying to attempt to score at least 75. Okay, should always be wanting to get three out of four things right. Uh, if you fail to do that, then you're definitely going to pass. To attempt to just get one out of every two things right, halfway, uh, doesn't make much sense to me, uh, because if I don't do that, I fail. Okay, please remember you've got 100% there. This is what you're trying to achieve to get a supplementary. Is all this all this stuff you you haven't learnt? I would imagine the reason you've come to university is to learn. If you haven't learnt all this stuff, what the hell are you doing? Okay. Uh, so you're not helping yourself. Uh, so yeah, I, I, questions like that always worry me because that that tends to suggest that you're lowering your expectations. I, I think you need to raise your expectations a little and you won't even have to concern yourself about questions like that. Uh, I'm sorry if you don't like the answer, but, but that's that's the real answer to that. Rinzen says, how do we get into the exam hall? There is no exam hall, Rinzen. All the early exams are being done on LearnJCU this trimester. Uh, you'll have to have, do not try it on your phone, okay? You will have to have a uh, reliable desktop or a laptop setup. And if you're not happy with your own setup, then I would suggest to you that you need to uh, come onto campus, make sure that uh, a, a couple of days, so this week, at the end of this week, come onto campus, make sure you can access all the machines and make sure you come in nice and early on the day of your exam um, so that you definitely have uh, a computer uh, to work on. We've got plenty of computers here. We don't think that's going to be an issue, uh, but still, the earlier you get here, the more likely you are uh, to have a computer and make sure you can log on to it, etc. Amy wants to know if we leave the window or tab during the online exam, does that mean we exit? Uh, yes, it could do. Uh, and if you do do that and you've done it by mistake, uh, even if you did it purposely, it doesn't really matter. We won't know just as, again, ring those numbers. Uh, yeah, so you really shouldn't be exiting a timed exam um, once you're in it. Okay, so you need to complete your timed exam once you're in it and you only have that amount of time, as soon as that time runs out, you'll be uh, unceremoniously kicked out. That's how our systems work, unfortunately. It's not like you're in a exam room where 
you have an invigilator that might go, oh, okay, it just sort of waits there for you to finish your last question. That's not going to happen. You're just going to get kicked out. So your real time management is essential in online exams. You have to make sure you've got everything complete. I would give myself a five minute buffer at the end of the exam at least. In fact, I give myself a 20 minute buffer so I can go back over questions and just add bits and uh, clean up things. Uh, so if I have a two hour exam, which is 120 minutes, I work it out as being an 100 minute exam. So if there's 100 marks, it's one minute a mark. Uh, and I only spend that amount of time and that question, I move on. Um, I have a system, okay, so tick question across. So each question, each question I determine, yeah, I know it, oh, not sure, oh, I don't know this, okay? Uh, at the start of the exam. So go through the exam. Now obviously the ticked questions are the ones that I do first and the, the question that's ticked that's worth the most is the one I do first. And as I said before, when we start pulling at our brain, and I like to think of knowledge as a string, every now and then it gets stuck, which is annoying. And ooh, okay, yeah, I remember that now. Uh, and then other times it's coming out smoothly and it snags other things, it brings other things out. And you go, oh, hey. And all of a sudden, what might have been a cross becomes a tick, okay? So, uh, just be mindful of that. It's, uh, it's, you spend the right amount of time on each question. Do the questions that you tick first, prioritize uh, your exam, and you should be fine. Have people received 100% before, and is there a prize? Yes, there are prizes for uh, our very best students. Um, if you do well once, you get a certificate. If you do very well twice, uh, you get a silver medal if you do very well three times, you get a gold medal and, um, and a letter from the director. So very worthwhile, very worthwhile. And there's money associated with that. So I'm pretty sure people have got 100%. And really that's what you should be trying to achieve. And obviously if you fail, it really doesn't matter. A HD is in the 85% range. So you can, you can not owe everything and still get a HD. Where will be a final exam? Will be a link before it. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I'll get back into the subject rooms. Okay, so uh, wouldn't matter what subject you go into. Okay, I'm just going to go into this one. Okay, it'll open up as usual on Learn JCU. Now I've shared it. You can see it. Okay, uh, most of the Subject websites will be, look very similar to this. Your exam will be in the assessments folder. This is why you need to be prepared. If you've got a timed exam, it can take some time. Okay, so we scroll down and here's our final examination folder. It's not the actual exam, but you can see here that it tells us what the exam is gonna be, when it is, that's very helpful. Okay, now the final exam won't be available until the 10th of June. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. So some, some have practice exams. Anyway, the examination information sheets here but this is where you access your exams. So that's the answer to the question. You go into the assessments folder, you find the final examination folder and all uh, academics have been told to make sure that the folder is, is labeled final examination. Uh, then you click on the link final examination and it will open up when it's made available to you. Okay, so this lecturer has made this PDF, so we need to download it. All right, and there's all the information about their exam here. Okay, so this is 
you're doing this subject, this would be important. And most of our uh, lecturers have put this important information into your information documents. So do have a rummage around in your subject websites. Have a look at what's available to you. Have a look at what's not available to you. Uh, if I was a student, I'd be in this particular subject, I'd be asking, hey, have we got a practice exam? Because you won't be able to see that. I'll show you what you'd be able to, you'd be able to see. Okay, so if I click on assessments, so we go into our subject website, click on assessments. And if I were you, I'd be doing this today after this session going into each of my uh, subjects that have got exams and checking out the examination folder. Okay. Oh, hello. It is available. That's weird. Anyway, so we'll click on here. That's a practice exam. Okay, now when you open up your real exam, it will tell you when the exam is due. It'll tell you if there's a time limit, just like this has, and it'll tell you how many attempts you have. Now most of the exams that are timed exams will have only one attempt. Okay. Now, I'm not sure whether that's the maximum score for the exam or not. That, that will be an examination information sheet. Okay. So I'll just close that down. But all that information's there for you. Now Jack sent me a question here with multiple choice questions. How do you figure out the correct answer? Um, there's two types of multiple choice questions. You'll have true false questions uh, or you might have A, B, C, D, E um, depending on uh, how it's been created. These are actually called quizzes in LearnJCU and uh, so you'll have a question and then there will only be one right answer. It'll either be true or false so you can't be true and false. Um, if a, a multiple, we're talking about multiple choice questions here, what we like to call MCQs, okay? So there's only one right answer. So you have to work out from the question what the right answer is. Um, that can be tricky. True, false questions are often very tricky. And you, you will have to have uh, quite a deal of understanding to answer the answer it correctly. The second type of question is a multiple choice question where you have uh, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, maybe E uh, options. But my experience is there's always one answer that's definitely wrong and you can just ignore it. Uh, that's there for new players. So somebody who hasn't done any study at all it's just walked in the exam and wants to go C, 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 then they're obviously going to hit the wrong answer uh, on a regular basis. Uh, then there'll be another question that'll answer that will normally be the opposite of the right answer. That gives you a clue. I, I usually use them as a clue as to what the right answer will be uh, because then there'll be two answers at least uh, that are very close to each other and require your uh, 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 an understanding. Now, personally, I don't like MCQs because I think I'm actually assessing my students' English more than their actual uh, knowledge of my subject. Uh, so you never get an MCQ from me. Uh, but lecturers that do do them, you need to talk to them how they construct their MCQs. They'll be more than happy to discuss that with you because they want you to be successful. So don't be afraid to talk about that with them. If you've got, you'll know the type of exam you're going to have. You'll know whether you've got multiple choice questions. And if you have, 
have a good discussion with your lecturer about how they create. But that's the general format. One's always wrong. One's the opposite of the right answer. And there'll be two or maybe three that are very close to the right answer. Um, so what if internet connection is slow? Yeah, well, you, you know that now, okay? Roshani, if you know now your internet connection is slow, then do not use your home computer. Doesn't make any sense, okay? Come into campus. Plenty of computers here that you'll be able to use. Uh, make sure you get here nice and early. Make sure this week you come in and make sure you can log on and get into each of your subjects. Uh, that's very important. If you've got a slow connection, that's going to slow down the response of your response to the exam. Not so much of a problem if you've got an exam where you're uploading to a Dropbox, but obviously a, a great problem if you only got a two hour exam. Best advice, come in on campus uh, if you've got any doubts about your personal system. If you don't know the answer, but you're able to show working, should you include your working? Yeah, that's a very good question. Again, I'd be referring that to your lecturer if we're talking about multiple choice questions. Often uh, multiple choice questions, you're either right or wrong. Uh, there's no middle ground. Obviously, if you're doing a question and you're not and, and it's an accounting question or it's a finance question and uh, the question's asking you for the answer, uh, it might be useful uh, to present, if you can, your working, uh, because that will show your knowledge to an extent and you might get part marks. Uh, now, how that's working, again, I'm not, I'm, I can't be sure. You need to talk to your lecturers to see what they're allowing you to do in the exam. I do know that some lecturers have been informing their students uh, that if they keep a document on the side, so writing things like, you know, that's very simple, but you know, you might be doing a sum here. Um, okay, something like that. Hypot trying to find the hypotenuse. Okay, um, you, you then are showing you're working. Uh, I do know that some lecturers are saying you can send that as an email separately. I'm not saying you can do that. I'm saying I do know that some lecturers are doing that. So you need to contact your lecturer and see what they're uh, allowing. That's very important. If we write the exam in paper, then there will be more than one paper and we have to click photo of that paper and upload it. So can we upload multiple papers? in a single attempt, absolutely. You just, uh, okay, so here's a blank document. So the picture. Okay, there's one picture. I want to insert another picture. Didn't work. Bear with me. Okay. So there's a couple of pictures uh, inserted. Oh, aren't we missing the sky lounge? Uh, the food. Oh dear. Give myself. Give me, made myself hungry there. All right, so yeah, you can put as many pictures as you like on a document. Um, that's basically what I'm trying to say there. Now, Roshani said, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Roshani, come into campus and um, come and say hello to me. We'll walk around and uh, make sure you're all set up. I'll be here at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I don't think the campus is opening at that time. We'll see what we can get done around that. I'm on campus uh, to Android. I'm on campus. I'm here every day. Uh, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to say I'm going to be here 7:30 uh, from this tomorrow uh, till Friday fortnight. How's that? So I'll be here 7:30.
So if you give me a call, 0438169691, this will be on my desk. If you're out the front, I'll let you in and you can come up and have a chat with me. Um, yeah, I'll be here from 7.30 to 5 o'clock for the next uh, two and a bit weeks. Okay, I'm going to make that promise today. This is fabulous. I've just been answering questions. I love it. This is exactly what I want a session to be. How to improve written English. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a practice. So you need to sit down, think about the questions you might be asked and uh, answer those questions. Uh, forward those on to your lecturer and get some feedback. Uh, lecturers love that sort of thing uh, and students don't do enough of it. So uh, that's the way I would improve my, not my English, my understanding of a subject. I think that the question you're asking is troublesome for me because you're meant to have a certain English level to, to be studying at university. If you're not at that level, then we do have English, uh, we do have a, an English advisor that I can get you in touch with that can assist you with your English, but that's not going to be helpful uh, to your exams next week. That's a long process. It's not a short-term short fix. Yes, if you want help with your English, please come and see me. I can put you in touch with an English advisor. Any other questions? All right, well, that's uh, three o'clock, and so I'm going to... Stop the record.